so that Kirito just helped free Alice. And oh, Yujiro went for the forbidden fruit. Hey Quinella, make me a night next. So what's up guys, Fox in here. After the SAO Lissization recap break, time for episode 19. This time it's Integrity Night Alice's turn to break free. And my god was this such a perfect episode. By the way, do be sure to like and subscribe for more weekly videos from a huge SAO fan. It'll also help other SAO fans find this video. So let's get started. Last time, Kirito accidentally brought up Alice's younger sister Selka. Oops, my bad, I totally messed up. So the key question this episode, would Kirito be able to persuade Alice over to his side and Yuji's side? At this moment, Q and the haters just saying that Alice is about to join the harem. Anyway, for the longest time I was wondering how they would show the nudist Quinella. Seems it's like how I predicted. Oh, they are using the hair to cover her lovelies. Works perfect. I mean, you can't corrupt anime people watching this. So back to the back and forth between Kirito and Alice, they were really just diving into the corrupt and lies by Quinella and the Axiom Church. Oh, all of these knights being summoned by the heavens? Oh, your memory supposedly sealed by the Sulla's goddess. What a load of BS. Although their memories were sealed by a different false underworld goddess. All of this was really getting into the truth from the first Essayolicization episode. It all began in the Rulid Village. All throughout this, Alice looked really pissed and still trying to resist, but deep down inside of her, she still had her doubts. You just gotta love Alice for wanting to find the truth out for herself. I mean, she could have easily sealed herself off. Interestingly enough, one of the key points of Alice's doubt stemmed from her younger sister, Selka, which was the sister or this rather young girl that Alice always kept on seeing in her dreams, but never knew who she truly was. Next up, let's get into a juicier topic, The War of the Underworld, which by the way is the official subtitle of the second SAO Lissization half. Right here, Kirito and Alice brought up some important points. Say that Kirito and Yujiro do take out all the Integrity Knights and Quinella out. What about the incoming Dark Territory invasion? Keep in mind that if all Integrity Knights do band together alongside Quinella, they still cannot stand a chance against the Dark Territory army at this point. And it's kind of funny since Kirito really doesn't give her an answer, but gives her a question back instead. Naturally, he doesn't really need to worry too much about that. You know, since he still has the Underworld reset option in the back of his mind. As for Bercoli here, definitely gotta love his little cameo. This really showed off being this huge concern for the Captain Commander Integrity Knight. And I definitely love that they added this for the anime. Unfortunately, this flashback did come at a cost of seeing that ugly ass clown. Notice, still super tiny. Come on, someone just set this evil clown on freaking fire. No one likes clowns. Unless it comes with the Happy Meal. Either way, Kirito here brought up the terrible state of the underworld, for the human empire anyway. To be honest, in some ways it's almost freaking ironic. I mean, you had Quinella that was so afraid of anyone potentially getting close to her power, that she neutered her own people. No killing monsters, and no experience for leveling up anyone. Just keep in mind that if Quinella never came into the picture, the human empire would have been naturally leveling up and getting ready for this dark territory fight for centuries. Right now, some nobles and some other people could use a sword and some skills, but these guys have no experience in combat. You could just imagine how well Team Mustard and Ketchup would do going up against the Dark Knights. Hey, actually, I wouldn't mind seeing that happen, although only the Mustard guy is left. As for Kirito's bright idea here, hey, let's build our own army. I do like how they reference that big ass armory inside of the church. Again, this really just reminds me of that corrupt government in Attack on Titan doing something similar with technology advancements. Although to be honest, Kirito might be a little bit too hopeful. Let me just say this. They don't exactly have a lot of time until the gate separating the human empire and dark territory crumbles. Tick tock. As for Alice's wish here, wanting to meet up with her long lost sister Selka. Unfortunately for this, I do have some bad news and something extremely important for you to notice. Alice mentioned how Integrity Knight Alice would revert back to the young Alice before she had the Sintonist ritual forced on her. Which by the way, I'm not sure how Kirito is so certain about this. Either way, just know that young Alice and Integrity Knight Alice are two different individuals. They may technically share the same body, but these two girls are not the same at this point. And goddammit Kirito, you made this lovely blonde girl cry. What's a wet girl count for Kirito now? I mean, Karma's gonna be watching. Although I kind of do like Kirito here, he was being super quiet. Kirito was like, I'll just wait this out. For Alice here, I really do have to commend her for wanting to return this quote unquote stolen body on her own. I mean, all that Alice was asking for was this tiny little wish, just to see her beloved sister from afar. You could really just imagine how many other knights are feeling similar to Alice here. Now, getting into Alice's huge moment. No Alice, you did a no-no. You voluntarily defied the Axian Church. Oh yes, the freaking Taboo Index pops his ugly head into here. 
If you think about it, this is the exact same thing that happened to Yujiro back at the academy. Although it's not exactly like Yujiro told Kirito about it in detail. And Kirito has definitely never seen it before. Not this close up. Now for this scene. This scene is definitely gonna make some dumbass SAO trolls freaking scream. Oh my god, Alice and Kirito are touching. It's definitely the same as making out, Alice might have been pregnant by this, Kirito just cheated on Asuna, and so on, you could imagine. But seriously, right here Kirito noticed something important, which was the freaking barcode and system alert on the taboo index seal. Let's just say that Kirito was onto something when he mentioned that some outside entity helping Quinella with this restriction. Kirito in the light novel also added something else. He thought about how it shouldn't be Wrath doing this, since it would be a huge contradiction to this whole project. Then, I freaking loved Alice's proclamation here. Just resisting ever being someone's damn puppet. And her willingness to fight against her oppressor Quinella. Oh, did someone say explosion? Freaking boom goes Alice. But to be honest, who didn't see this coming? I mean, they had already given it away on the second SAOlicization poster. Next up, switching it over to blonde boy Yujiu. Last time you left Yujiu as a freaking popsicle. And there was a freaking pet clown from Quinella close by. So this episode, Quinella finally makes her return here. Unfortunately, you got Quinella doing the nasty with Yujiu. She was just up to her slimy ways. Quinella really just clawing at her victims' insecurities. The only surprising thing about this was that she was actually dressed. I mean, she was really trying to make Yujiu believe that he killed his own parents and brothers and whole family? Come on, really? Although she was really just getting the ball rolling with this. Really quickly, do notice that ceiling painting. Even though this is technically Quinella's corrupted underworld history. My god, does this look beautiful. You got a shot of the human empire, plus the Axiom Church tower, and the sun goddess with her bow. Although, more importantly, is what Quinella has hidden up there. If you want to know, post down below. Also, another thing to notice are those weapons on the wall. Just keep in mind, these are super divine class weapons on there. Just let your imagination run wild. As for that huge ass bed in the middle, aw, Yujiu found a lovely sleeping girl. Too bad this purple lady is one nasty individual. Thankfully, Yujiu got spotted before feeling her up. Just know that that one voice he heard is in fact from young Alice. Alright, as for Yujiu trying to stab the sleeping girl, naughty naughty. But seriously, so close yet so far. Honestly, Yujiu screwed up royally by letting her wake up. He should have quickly stabbed that bitch. So getting into the false goddess waking up, Quinella was really just at it again in real life. Just trying to claw away at Yujiu bit by bit. I mean, at this point, keep in mind that Quinella has lived for centuries. Yujiu, in comparison, definitely didn't stand any chance resisting her manipulated ways. Interestingly, Quinella does bring up that love card. I wonder how many times she's pulled up that. And just a little bit extra info about this. Quinella specifically always targets love for an individual. She really sees this as this grand weakness from humans. Which is part of the reason she freaking discarded those emotions. And I know, maybe I'm gonna get hate for this, but it's almost enjoyable how much Quinella has made her trick or deceivery into this art form. I mean, she literally had the poor blonde Yujiu right where she wanted him, just dancing and bending in whichever way she wanted. If anything, all of these insecurities show a key weakness. If anything, all of these insecurities show a key weakness for Yuju, which happens whenever Kirito isn't around to help guide Yuju. Next up, the scene that was the real nail in the coffin for what followed. Quinella really just had to show off young Kirito and young Alice crushing on each other. I mean, Quinella could have really just started off with this scene and one hit KO'd Yujiu. But no, Quinella wanted to play with her freaking food. And for the scene too, watch confused shippers falling harder for the scene than even Yujiu. <laughs> Overall, this was just an amazing Quinella scene. Throughout watching this, it just gave me freaking chills. You gotta love to hate Quinella. And then finally stripping too. So it looks like they are sticking with the hair sensor thing for Quinella conveniently long hair. Now for Yujiu's final scene. This whole situation really showed Yujiu's final mental struggle. Even when Yujiu was at the end of a cliff, he was desperately reaching out for those he loved in his mind. Poor Yujiu, Tise, young Alice, and even his best buddy Kirito couldn't help him. Honestly, the combination of that scene with the song, by the end of the episode, I was in freaking tears. Poor Yujiu, fully falling to Quinella's corruption. By the way, just in case it wasn't clear enough, Quinella was leading Yuju into voluntarily saying that system call, which would give Quinella access to pretty much his everything. Unfortunately, Yuju went to sleep as a young boy, and he's about to awaken as a manly integrity knight. So my god, what an amazing episode. Definitely one of the top from the season so far. Next up, let's get into the light novel changes going into the anime. I'm happy to say that nothing drastic got cut, so let me just give you the highlights. First off, the Alice and Kirito scene. For this specifically, the anime captured this nicely. Most of the things cut out were side things Kirito was thinking about. 
For the first thing cut, Kirito was really thinking how Fizel and Linel must have been produced at the Axion Church. And you know what I mean by produced. Kirito was then quickly disgusted at the thought. Next up, Kirito thinking about his plan after defeating Quinella. To be honest, he gave his chances like 30% or lower of actually succeeding. But if he won, he would then try to find the system console in order to contact the rat guys to try to stop the incoming invasion. Kirito here also thought about Kayaba. This true reality in the new world that Kayaba mentioned when the original SAO was being destroyed was very likely this underworld. The entire purpose of the seed program must have been to give birth to the underworld. Kirito then finally thought about Kiku from Rat. Surely his goal for this whole underworld simulation must have been related to Japan's national defense goal. Next up, switching it over to the Yujo and Quinella scene. Some of Ijo's thoughts were cut out. When Ijo was looking at the sleeping Quinella, Ijo felt that she just looked extremely divine, even surpassing the beauty of Alice. Although not a fair comparison, Alice was only human after all. Next up, something else cut was another scene after the young Alice and young Kirito scene. Quinella showed something else to Yujo which focused on his family. It really showed Yujo's brother being pissed at Yujo being assigned the woodchopper task. Yujo then noticed how his father was taking his wages. Naturally, Yujo was disgusted with this. I could see why this got axed. Perhaps even more damning was his next scene, was something that the village guard Jinx told to Yujo, that now that Alice had been taken away, that there weren't any more females in the village left to possibly be Yujo's wife. Oh, what a burn. Once again, I just cannot stress out how perfect this episode was. By the way, really quickly, a ton of Alice figures have been announced. So yes, there goes a ton of cash in the future. Who needs food? Hell, there goes my McDonald's budget. But do tell me, are you going to be getting an Alice figure, or three or five? I really just wonder how long until a Quinella one shows up. Anyway, more important, let me hear your thoughts on this episode. Are you happy to see Alice finally break free of the taboo index? Also, what do you think about Quinella? Are you hating her or loving to hate her? And how about for blonde boy Yuju? Did he fall for Quinella too easily? Or do you think Yuju stood no chance at all against his goddess? Unfortunately, you know what's coming next week. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. More juicy SAO videos here every week. Do check out my recent SAO video on Kirito Doublating. Where is that in Season 3? Don't forget to check out my recent videos on Alita Battle Angel, Shield Hero, and Attack on Titan. And I'll see you guys later.